Rejoicing Heart Ministries. We hope everyone is having an awesome day. This is Robin Donna Litwin here to encourage you with the Word of God. We would like you to pray and consider becoming a monthly partner to help us increase the ways we are proclaiming the Word of God. This is easy to do. Just visit our website at rejoicingheart.net. We thank you for your support. Our teaching today is about turning your complaining into thanksgiving to God. Our reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Today's teaching is called Count Your Blessings. This verse, written by the Apostle Paul, is telling everyone to give thanks, because giving thanks is what God's will is for your life. God wants you to be thankful for the things He does for you. Most notably, He gave you Jesus as a sacrifice for salvation. This salvation includes forgiveness of sins, perfect health, financial prosperity, and deliverance from all evil in this present world. These things, first and foremost, are what you should be thankful for every day. After you give thanks for these, you have to look at your own life and appreciate what God has done personally for you. My personal example of thanks would be, I have the best wife and marriage ever, three awesome kids, and a job where I get to bless people with the Word of God. Everyone has many things in their life to be thankful for, but you will not realize it unless you take time to consider all the wonderful things God has done and is doing in your life. In the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Here Paul was saying the exact same thing from the opposite perspective. If you are murmuring and disputing, you are grumbling and complaining, which is not being thankful. The reason you complain or murmur and dispute is because you are thinking on the wrong things and not being thankful, which causes you to complain. Paul gave us the answer to stop this wrong thinking and to be thankful in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 5. It says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Since we know that we should be thankful and not complain, if you are unthankful and complain, you know that this is against God's will for your life. You must do what this verse says. Take those negative thoughts and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Jesus. When you start to have negative thoughts and want to complain, don't do it. Bring those thoughts into captivity by changing your thoughts to thankful thoughts. This is easy to do. First, you must recognize that it is happening to you. Then when you do realize it, if you find yourself struggling to stop doing it, you have to say, Jesus, help me. When you do ask Jesus for help, it becomes easier every time it happens. This is impossible to do without the power of the Holy Spirit in you. That is why you ask Jesus to help you. The easiest way to accomplish this is by keeping your thoughts on thanksgiving to God by not saying anything negative, especially when you are around a very negative person and want to jump on the complaining bandwagon with them. Don't do it. Step back and do what James said in his letter, chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. James is telling everyone to listen swiftly or without interrupting the person talking, to be slow to speak or respond, which means have self-control with your words, and definitely do not become angry, because that will cause you to speak uncontrollably. If you become angry... Recognize it as soon as possible and stop yourself, again, by asking Jesus for help. For anyone that has children, consider this. When you do something for your child and you know they appreciated what you did for them because they show their appreciation, it makes you feel so good that you desire to do more for them. On the other hand, if you hear your children complain about everything without appreciation, it makes you feel as though there was no point in even doing what you did. Imagine our Heavenly Father. When we are complaining, do you think he enjoys it? I doubt it. When our children are complaining, we can walk away from them for a while till they stop it. Our Heavenly Father doesn't have that option because he told every born-again believer that he would never leave them or forsake them in the letter to the Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. I have to wonder sometimes if God ever regrets making that statement while he is listening to us complain. Thank you, Jesus, that God is love. He loves us so much that He would never leave us or forsake us, not even when we are complaining. Take this information, meditate on it, and apply it to your life. Next time you find yourself in a miserable situation, 
Don't start complaining. Consider what you have to be thankful for in your life. If you believe you have nothing to thank God for, thank Him for the air you breathe. In closing, put this verse into your heart for thanksgiving to God. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 15 says, Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. The gift Paul was speaking about is Jesus, and there is nothing that will ever deserve more thanksgiving to God than Jesus. I say it again. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift, Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for Jesus and everything he has done for us by dying on the cross and rising again. Help us to stop grumbling and to be more thankful for what we have. In Jesus' holy name, amen.